Well, hello. It's time for a bad haircut edition of Pens in Use. This is the show where I talk about uh, the pens and inks that I've been using throughout the week. And I'll just get the elephant out of the room right away. Yes, I got tired of my hair because it was too long. So uh, I gave myself kind of an uneven buzz cut. <laughs> so let's dive into the pens. If videos like this interest you, where I talk about fountain pens and inks that I've been using throughout the week, um, I would invite you to sub sorry, forgot my line there. I would invite you to subscribe. And uh, this week, I'm just kind of curious if you've done something you wouldn't have done uh, prior to COVID-19. <laughs> Let us know down in the comments. So now, let's take a look at the pens I'm using this week. So I have from left to right Schaefer Legacy Two. Wingsung 699, Wingsung 699, Pilot Custom 823, yeah, I'm going to go there. Uh, Bolograph from Sweden, Selector Purple and Black, Selector 123E, Airmail Registered, an Astura 82, and a Platinum 3776. As always, I will be recording my writing samples in my BOMO art journal, and uh, it's almost full, so I'll be starting a new one soon. Um, give me a few pages yet. So let's take a look at the pens. And I may court a little controversy in this video, uh, just for fun, because what's a pens in use if I don't make somebody mad in the comments? So my first pen is the fingerprint magnet, the Schaefer Legacy 2. Purchased from Venice Pens. Apparently they had a stash in their basement somewhere has a nice inlaid nib and I will show you the filling mechanism but it's a what would they call them draw filler oh the name is escaping me at the moment it'll come to me as soon as I quit the video uh, so and it wrote that title so well why not now there we go This is an ink that uh, I like, but sometimes can be difficult with a pen, um, if it's a drier pen, because it's, it's kind of a drier ink. But it is a very nice color. Kind of a dusky purple, and I guess I like them. And give it a nice little swatch here. It's also an iron gall ink, and uh, after school ends and I have a little more free time, I would like to do a video about iron gall inks in general, especially maybe the chemistry of them. You know, with what little knowledge I can impart. I'm uh, not a chemist by trade. It's not even my degree. My degree is in physics. Um, but I'm not ignorant of science, and I do know stuff. <laughs> I do know how to teach, so we'll go with that. All right, my next pen was one of my first impressions this week. I was going to originally do uh, a pen re rest restoration video and a, a first impression video this week, but uh, that whole time thing, you know, you'd think teaching at home I'd have more free time, but I really don't. Um, but I can Get more things done, I suppose. So this is, uh, of course, you could probably tell, meant to be a bit of an homage to the uh, Pilot Custom 823, which you may have noticed is laying on the table here. So this is a Wing Sun 699. Oops, 99. <laughs> um, I've got two nibs. This one is the medium. Uh, the ink. I'm just going to show you its name because uh, I haven't tried to figure it out yet, but it's Krishna Specialty Causal, whatever that means. It meant absolutely nothing to me. You know, it's a turquoise, but uh, I don't see it as any more special than one of my other turquoise inks. I 
Nice yeah. color, though. Uh, by the way, if you just heard that, I have, uh, I'm cooking bread. I've got a sourdough starter, so I'm probably going to interrupt this video to go put the bread in the oven. That was my timer telling me, uh, that I've got about half an hour before that point comes, and I, because I turned the stove on to heat it up. Uh, yeah, so I'm experimenting with sourdough. I've already made English muffins with it, which were a little dense because I didn't have any baking soda. I had to use baking powder instead. And if you know chemistry, they're not the same. This is my other wing sung 699. I like the ink on this one. And it may be just because of that evocative name. I did mess up when I did these videos originally. I uh, labeled both of these nibs as mediums, but actually this one's a fine. Not that you can really tell from the writing sample. And the ink in this one is Krishna Monsoon Sky. I've never lived anywhere that particularly gets monsoons or hurricanes or anything. You know, when I lived in Pennsylvania, sometimes we'd get the rain from a hurricane, but never all the other bits. Of course, here in North Dakota, hurricanes, what hurricanes? But uh, very evocative name, and it, it makes me think of that dark, dark sky you get before a storm. Um, I think Robert Oster, with its thunderstorm ink, did a better job with this, but, uh, you know, for North Dakota and for what I know, but very evocative name and a nice color. Now my next pen, since let's get into the controversy, is a Pilot Custom 823. And it is a fine nib. Uh, the ink in this one is Rohrer and Klingner Aubergine, which is a special edition ink. I don't know if you can still get it, but at the time I was able to get it. I like it. I actually like it a bit better than the Deatramentis version. Am I allowed to admit that? I think it behaves better on paper. You know, Roar and Klingner, you don't hear about them much, but they're actually very good inks. Um, so I'll come, I'll circle back to this, but I just wanted to mention, oops, let's screw this back in. I just wanted to mention that uh, these are two very similar pens. So I want to talk about that a little bit at the end of the video. I'm trying to keep them neatly aligned up, which I'm not usually careful of, uh, because you're going to see the full tray again at the end of the video, because there's a point I want to make. All right, this is a Bolograph, which is a Swedish pen, probably not made in Sweden. Uh, there's no, oh, there is a nib size, it's a medium. I don't have a model for this pen, so we're just going with Bolograph. Uh, I gotta, don't remember what the ink in it is, though, so I gotta look at my list here. Uh, oh, Krishna Pacha Avari. So, again, I have several inks of this color, so I'm not in a hurry to go buy this one. Plus, I'm not really doing much buying. Whoop, Pacha, not Pasha. I'm not really doing much buying right now anyway. I was quite pleased uh, with my bank account balance when I got my next paycheck. So I'm like, whoa, stimulus check in there plus quite a lot more money than I usually have at the end of the month. So the sheltering in place hasn't been all bad. And I have just way too much ink, so uh, a reduction in the number of inks is welcome. 
This is a select door. I don't really have a model number for it, but uh, every time I use it, I have to show off this beautiful finish. So this is a select door. And I just called it modeled purple and black. Not that I have many select, oops, I'm giving you the finger. I just realized I'm pointing the wrong finger out there. Oh, none of my students ever see this video. Uh, the ink in this one I showed you last week is a very sheening ink. Diamine Purple Rain. And last week when I showed this for the first time, I did some singing. So I will spare you from that this week because I misidentified singers and songs and all sorts of stuff because I listen to music, but it's not like a passion of mine. So uh, I don't always pay attention to who's singing. <laughs> so I kind of made a hamburger out of that whole, whole deal. This is a, another selector. One of these weeks soon, I need to do the video. On, oops, turned the wrong, turned the wrong part. Uh, I need to do a video on this one. It's 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 a review because not that I've done a first impression, but first impression ship has sailed because I bought this back before I was doing first impression videos. So selector one two three e. And it has a fine nib, although I'm tempted to call it extra fine. With, and it has a sweet spot, too. Uh, the ink in it is Colorverse. Golden Record. Which is a neat concept. Uh, there's a satellite out there with a gold-colored record on it that you know, plays the sounds of Earth on it, and speech, and has all kinds of different things on the satellite about Earth. Uh, but the truth is, you know, let's just get realistic. How likely is it that it will ever be found, a la Star Trek Voyager? I don't, can't remember if that was the same satellite or not. I have not seen Star Trek Voyager in probably 20 years. But, uh... Anyway, the moral of the story is uh, some alien thingy picks up the satellite and makes it part of it somehow. But anyway, how likely is it that the satellite as it leaves the solar system will ever be found? Not very likely. Space is huge. All right, so I promised to... Uh, this one was fine. The, I had another one of these because I did two of them for that video. Uh, and I promised to bring it back and write with it, but it, it's still giving me grief. I cleaned out the feed, flushed it with, uh, well, first with, with water, and then I used pen flush because it still wasn't really any different. And, yeah, I just can't get the thing to write. I'm, I'm going to have to look at it some more. But this one is fine. Uh, this is an airmail registered. Uh-oh. Well, it was fine last time I wrote with it. Done, got it. You know, I'm just looking at the tines. They don't look quite right. <laughs> it's, it's like they uh, splay apart from each other like this. I haven't done anything weird to the pen, so I don't know what's up. All right, now we're, now we're cooking. Well, we were cooking on the paper towel I was using. All right, if you can't guess which pen out of this batch I have not used very much this week, and you guessed this one, you would be right. I didn't really care for the color of the ink, you know, to be honest. They can't all be winners. 
Krishna Freedom Gold. What week was it I was singing uh, Freedom is Just Another Word for Nothing Left to Lose? I got some uh, interesting comments about that one. See, that, that's part of my problem as a reviewer. Um, I don't think any pen company would touch me with a 10-foot pole because I uh, spout off too much about non-pen related things. I don't have the discipline of a Stephen Brown or a penultimate Dave or you know those kind of people. I just kind of blurt out and people are going, ah, you can't say that. <laughs> so, <laughs> but anyway, um, back on the topic of the pens. So, uh, there you go. Krishna, freedom gold in a, that's a little dried out. I better make sure I do some writing with that pen this week. I'm almost time for me to go put the bread in. It's definitely, the stove's heating up the house. I'm going to have to open up some windows, too. Oh, didn't show you the next pen. So my next pen was a wonderful Italian pen. This is an Astura 82. I feel like I did a Italian pen, vintage Italian pen recently that was... I'll have to look. I can even picture the pen has a tassel on it. I'll have to look what it was. This pen has a very nice finish on it. I'm not sure, you know, it's it's rings kind of like that, the Parker Vacumatic, but they're uneven and they've got this grain to them. So I'm not, and then I think I see seams and then the seams disappear. So I'm not entirely sure how this celluloid was made, but it's pretty. It's a smaller pen. I'm kind of surprised that it's still writing because I've been writing with this one a lot. Alrighty. And the final pen on the list is a Platinum 3776 with the uh, Sheng Yo finish. I've been forgetting the name of it and I was doing some cleaning and ran across the box. I'm getting rid of a bunch of boxes, so, uh, huh. Oh, a little condensation there, I guess. Um, Anyway, I like this pen. I, I, the 3776 is a good model. And it has a good variety of nibs available on it. This is the double broad. Some of the nibs are, are harder to find, but they are becoming more uh, common. You know, more retailers are carrying them. I haven't found, uh, you know, as many nibs available on the Parker, Pre or sorry, the Platinum President. But again, it could be on the market thing. I think uh, Platinum does a lot more with this model than they do with the President. But I suppose the President's more of a classic pen with... Uh, you know, set number of finishes and so on that it is, than some of these others are. You know, they're always doing special edition finishes on the 3776, and just not a lot with the president. Um, standing up here, <laughs> these loaves didn't raise as much as I thought they would. Um, I put the one in the oven, because it said not to raise it more than two hours. It's been two hours. Uh, but it also talks about it being mounted up above the top of the bread tin. So I'm going to let this one raise a little bit more while the other one cooks. And, you know, maybe being in the warm kitchen will encourage it. The thermometer in the kitchen does say 73 degrees, so it should be plenty warm. It's warmer than I like it. All right, so we'll come back to these pens here because uh, I had a few people kind of upset over these two 
excuse me, these two Wing Sung 699s. Uh, basically that they're stealing that design from the uh, Pilot Custom uh, A23. Now this is another, this isn't actually a Wing Sung, this is a pen BBS, but this is another pen from China. Uh, I did put a different nib on it, to be clear. It's a vac filler, just like these two guys. So is this one stealing from Pilot? Uh, I would say no, it's a totally different pen. Um, shares a little bit the shape with the Schaefer Legacy, but man, not too much. Uh, but uh, now these two, especially this one, I, I don't have a clear uh, pilot, so I can't compare there. But these two, especially, you know, they're they're stealing that amber color. Uh, so is that what they're doing? Um, we've got a band here, same band. We've got the cap band, although the pilots is a little lower. And here it's a continuous, it's a double band. Here it's more has windows to the finish. A little bit different clip. The pilot's a little bit blunter at the top here. But definitely some design cues. Uh, one thing I, I appreciate with this, I'm not going to do it right now, but I appreciate with the wing sun, I can unscrew here and clean out the pen. Whereas with the pilot, I cannot. No, I'm not going to risk it. Uh, not with that much ink in it. Um, I think that the finish on the Pilot is a lot more machined. This is all very aligned here. Uh, you definitely have some steps and differences in tolerance here on the Wing Sung. Uh, the writing experience, as you saw, this is a much better fine. Uh, it, it, it's a much better writing experience in the Pilot. But I wanted to point something else out. Uh, that seems to have a very similar shape, similar shape, similar shape. Uh, oh, th this one, horse of peace, maybe, maybe not. This one seems to have a very similar shape. There are certain classic uh, design elements. I mean, if you're going to have a cigar-shaped pen, they're going to look a lot alike. You can slap a different finish on them. But, you know, the question is, at what point is it unique enough that it's its own animal? Platinum put its own finish on this, but uh, seems to do the same trim ring places as my pilot does. You know, two trim rings here, a single one up here, a single one here. Uh, this is not even functional. Why even have this trim ring? You know, there is no reason for it because it's not a blind cap. It's not an ink filler cap of any kind. It doesn't do anything. They just randomly put a band there. Why? Well, decoration. And it has kind of a classic look that way. Some of these other pens it's needed. Uh, and, and I'll wander over here. I've got uh, a nice bay or, uh, what is it? 388 looks an awfully lot like oh this one this is a Parker uh, sonnet clearly inspired by the sonnet in fact I've seen finishes kind of like this in some of the more vintage sonnets a uh, little bit different design on the on the clip here but it's not claiming to be Parker this one's claiming to be a Parker. Did a whole video on that. Um, this is clearly a fake. Uh, I did a video where I explained why, so you can watch that for how I know. Um, I see that some of the gold trim is starting to fail on it already. <laughs> Awkward. But this Baylor, oh, clearly a Baylor nib on it. So, yeah, um... Are these copies of each other? There's a lot of similarities. So I don't have a definitive answer for you. Uh, that's an answer you have to decide for yourself. At what point is it too close? Um, 
I could show you some Geha and Reform pens from the 1970s that look an awful, and, and uh, Toes Pencala from the other side of the Iron Curtain. Uh, in fact, we'll just do this. The, this, this is some upcoming videos. This is a Reform, I don't remember the model number, and a Geha 726. Looking a lot alike there. Uh, here's a, a Rex pen. Kind of sharing, I mean, it's metal, but sharing some definite aesthetics there. Uh, here's a, actually, that's not a good example. Well, anyway, I'm getting off the subject. My point is, you, you have to decide for yourself where where too close is. Uh, I, uh, uncomfortable with this, but I wouldn't go as far as calling it stealing. Uh, it's, it's been a traditional thing in clothing. You know, you may have your... Okay, and, and this shows that I'm not a clothing person. So I'll just say uh, your big brand name of clothes, and then everybody else has a very similar look, but they slap a different name on it. Uh, the same thing goes on with pens. You know, how many pen, vintage pens look like this? You know, it's just a standard practice. Now, on that vintage pen line, I'm going to try and film a video on this one. Oh, no, actually not that pen. Where'd it go? Found it. No, I didn't. That's Chinese. Okay, found it. <laughs> uh, this is my escritor. Um, it's been waiting to have a video. I did a lot of cleaning on it. I went to uh, put the converter in, and the converter doesn't fit. So it suggested to me to uh, rehydrate some cartridges. Uh, they're Schaefer-type cartridges, so I rehydrated this one and the ink would not dissolve it just kind of floated around like pond scum now i think you can kind of tell here maybe uh i had a suggestion from a viewer to stick it in the ultrasonic cleaner it made a lot of the paint come off but whatever and uh it looked good after i got it in the ultrasonic cleaner but there was just a cautious part of my brain i thought no i'm gonna wait a week see what happens and all the ink settled to the bottom of the cartridge. So I've decided I'm not going to use it. Gotta figure out how to clean that thing out, but... Or, you know, whatever. But, anyway. So I had a viewer send me some, cart some Schaefer cartridges. Now I'm going to experiment with rehydrating these two. As you can see, they have uh, dried up with age. And, you know, with a... 98 cent 12 pack. I'm pretty sure uh, this is an older pack of cartridges. So anyway, I'm going to try experiment with rehydrating those, see what it does. In the meantime, it occurred to me just a few minutes before I started filming this video that, wait a second, you once reviewed a Schaefer pen that used cartridges. A long time ago, I reviewed a Schaefer Tyrannus. Now, I've given that pen away so I no longer own it, but I got to thinking, I wonder if I have the cartridges, and it turned out I do. It must have come with a blue and a black cartridge. So I'm pretty excited about that. I uh, am going to finally film my video on the Escritor and uh, discuss, you know, that. <laughs> Sorry, I, I just drew a total blank there. So, um, surprise, it's May. Uh, I put May 1st on it. I am filming this a little late again. Uh, that whole teaching online all day is makes it really hard to want to sit down in front of a camera again. i got to record a video tonight that reviews the whole concept of thermal energy. Uh, well, energy in general for my students because I'm going to show them some chemical energy. So I got to film part of this video at night because I need a nice dark room. So we're going to take that camera because I can manually control the focus. I'm going to take that camera down to the basement and see if I can record on video smashing lifesavers, uh, wintergreen lifesavers on my workbench that's down in the basement. It, it flashes. Normally what I do with the kids is we'll crowd into my chemical supply room. You know, I'm not supposed to have them in there, but I figure for this one thing, I do. Uh, because there's no windows in that room. And I have to warn the teacher next to me that I'm doing this because 
the sound of a bunch of kids in that room isn't something he's used to. And then the, the sound of banging uh, usually gets his attention. Because um, I don't encourage kids to bite on him and watch him flash, because that's a good way to have some kid end up with chipped teeth. Uh, so I just demonstrate fl smashing him on the counter. So I'll, uh, my, I can't have my kids in my classroom right now, so I'm going to try, uh, try <laughs> filming it. We'll see how that goes. So that'll be kind of fun. And I've got some ideas about energy. Uh, you know, I, I got ideas about how to teach energy actually last year because last year was kind of a challenging group of freshmen. Uh, th this group isn't as challenging. They're, uh, I'm not getting as much covered with this whole teaching online thing, but that's another story. Uh, but, uh, we were originally on target to finish ahead of last year's class with a fun project to end the year, but clearly that's not going to happen. So, uh, but anyway, trying to give them that practical experience, even though they can't necessarily do it. You know, I sent my uh, sourdough in starter instructions to the uh, biology teacher. I thought that'd be kind of a fun little at home project, but you know, not all kids have flour at home. And, you know, if you use tap water, it's not going to go as well. So, but you know, the, I think there is good in this online thing. Uh, I, I can see the possibility that down the road teaching might become a hybrid. Uh, but there's no substitute for that practical experience and that in-person uh, accountability. Um, and that in-person personal contact. Uh, I have... Uh, I have one class of junior high kids that I teach, and it's a class that switches every quarter. So uh, there's a whole group of kids in the seventh grade. I don't know who they are. I try to interact with them a little bit online. You know, I show up to the class early, and you know, the kids that show up early, I'll say, hey, and we'll talk a little. You know, I found out that one's a motorcycle rider over by Rain, which is a, a nearby community. We, <laughs> this school district's bigger than the state of Rhode Island, and I'm not even joking about that. Um, but, uh, you know, a lot of things, and yet I don't have that contact with them like I normally do, so it's it's very uncomfortable. I, uh, I want to get to know my kids. <laughs> Uh, at the same time, it is kind of nice um, being able to have a lot more freedom to work when I want to, um, being able to schedule the lesson and then you know, do my part and then turn them loose to do it on their time rather than, you're in class, we've got 50 minutes, and you will do this, 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 this. We're not going to fool around and having to police all that. You know, you don't have to. Uh, it's up to them if they want to do it in the evening because they don't work well during the day or, you know, they, they want to work when it's quiet rather than when there's a bunch of other kids doing things. They have that freedom. So uh, anyway, like I said, I think I see the possibility of uh, more hybrid coming in the future. And who knows um, if we don't come up with a vaccine, we may be back to doing the video thing again next year. Hope not, but it may come again. I, I think we'll start the year in person, but... Uh, I'm ready for that possibility that we'll end up canceling school and doing it online again. So uh, we'll see. So anyway, um, you can also see my uh, kind of disastrous haircut. I, I did better than some of the ones I've seen online, but uh, I learned a few things as I was taking swipes of my hair. Uh, so I will do better next time after this grows out again, but... Hopefully soon I'll be able to get to a barber. Um, barber can fix it. She'll probably be mad at me. But uh, actually, North Dakota has opened up a bit. I uh, disagree with their reasons for doing so. And some of their rules are just like, yeah, that's not going to be enforced. So I'm continuing to social distance. I don't have any clue if my barber has opened up. I just decided not to even find out. Uh, I... Uh, I'm going to continue to social distance for a while. I'm not too worried about myself. I, I'm at that age I could get sick, and there are people that get really sick at my age, but uh, I'm not in the group that's most at danger, but I don't want to be an asymptomatic spreader either, so I'm just going to continue for a while social distance. Uh, I like, and speaking of that teaching online thing, I have really enjoyed uh, having the freedom and time to do more cooking uh, during the week, you know, this bread, I don't usually cook bread. I usually buy, uh, was it Joseph's pita bread at the, the grocery store? 
I've liked being able to make my own bread because I'm mostly using, except for in the sourdough starter, mostly using 100% whole wheat flour. And I have yeast and, uh, you know, that that's good. I, uh, I'm going to have to learn how to make pita bread next. I know how to make homemade uh, tortillas out of whole wheat flour. Uh, I have uh, masa harina, so I may try making uh, corn tortillas soon too. Um, but yeah, the, just that freedom to experiment and cook. Like this sourdough bread is so picky in so many steps that I don't know that I would necessarily have tried to make it if I weren't stuck indoors. Or, yeah, stuck at home. Um, so it's been good to have some of these experiments and experiences. I'm going to make some stuffed shells for supper tonight with stuffed with sun-dried tomatoes. I'm excited about that. Uh, just uh, nice. I can teach while I work on my laundry. Uh, take a break and clean house a little bit. Uh, it's not as clean as it should be. I don't have any excuse for that. It's just the way it is. But, uh, you know, I've, I've seen a lot of good in this. Um, and like I said at the beginning, my bank account has definitely enjoyed this. I, I'm going to have to take a good, serious look at what I've spent my money on and uh, why I have so much extra money in the bank at the end of this month. And, and, you know, the reality is, without getting too specific to me, we often make those little purchases during the day or the week. We don't think about, you know, a dollar here, two dollars there. Uh, but at the end of the month... That adds up. And, uh, of course, part of it has been I just was not going to buy online unless it was something I needed. So I haven't bought any more pens or anything like that. But, I, uh, yeah, it, it, it's a good chance to do a little soul-searching reflection. Oh, maybe I should keep a journal every time I spend money, write down how much and what it's on. And that that actually can be a very eye-opening exercise or you know, people writing down every time they eat and what they eat, even if it's, you know, just, oh, I grabbed a couple of jelly beans from the jar at work, you know, whatever it is. Uh, it can be very eye-opening if you're complete. And you say, oh, yeah, that's why I weigh 400 pounds. Or, or oh, that's why I'm always broke at the end of the month. So, uh, Anyway, I, I guess I had a question at the beginning. You know, what's uh, a big change in your life thanks to this? Or a big... Have you done anything drastic like cut off all your hair very unevenly uh, during this time in isolation? Let us know down in the comments. a great time to talk about non-pen and things. So, hope this is interesting. And if videos like this interest you, I would invite where I talk about fountain pens, I'm forgetting my lines again, where I talk about fountain pens both new and old and at all price points, I would invite you to subscribe. And again, share your comments about uh, some of the experiences you've had during this virus, the disastrous haircutting or uh, increased cooking at home, or you know, maybe you're one of these people that eats out every night and holy cow, now you've discovered that, hey, I can cook and I like my cooking better. You know, let us know down in the comments. So as always, I wanna thank you for watching. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.